Well, they're pretty good spirits today. You know, we um, took them in the film room and just, you know, tried to go over some coverages and things and and um, all those things I said pregame about, you know, all the great things we do defensively. We were missing on a few of those last night behind the traps and things like that. But a lot of that, you know, just due to energy and uh, that kind of stuff. And uh, again, the energy was, was a little bit down last night and we'll have to regroup and get it back to where it needs to be. Yeah, you guys didn't turn them over the way other teams have turned them over. They were yesterday. Go figure, right? The team that turns it over the most in the league, we can't turn over. How, how much of that was them and put, how much of that was Well, you? put that all under the list of it was one of those kind of weird nights last night, right? Nothing was seemed to be uh, um, quite as it was, you thought it was going to be or whatever. and. Um, I woke up this morning scratching my head wondering how we were ahead with 50 seconds to go in that game. Seriously, after watching the film, I was like, if there wasn't a scoreboard running down the bottom, I would have felt like we were down 35 with a minute to go, but we had the lead. So, again, I get, it takes a lot to beat us and um, give our guys credit for always, you know, fighting and trying to find a way. You said the stuff behind the trap blitz is really recent. How would you evaluate NNOB as the primary defense? Um... He was okay, right? It's okay. It's really tough to be a primary guy on those guys. Um, my my points are that that you know you accept the challenge, you work at it. You know you're going to get scored on, and you pull your socks up and go get down in a stance, and you go again the next possession. Um, he's developing. I think I think you know his role on this team starts there for us of being a, a lockdown defender, and. Um, so we're trying to develop that as we go here. The strength of his lower body really kept Donovan Mitchell off balance. Jimmy's a totally different guy. I mean, James is another. Is that a, I mean, just in general, that must be a really hard move, right? Like, that's got to be tough for a defender to go from guy to guy to guy. I think, I think that you can just go back in just about every game. If you're a very locked down defender, you can go every game. I mean, I don't know. Who did we play before that? Orlando. Evan Fournier's. Utah, Donovan Mitchell. I mean, there, you can just, you know, you can just go on and on and on and on, right? Um, who do we play after Houston? You know, you're back to guarding a, a 6'10 point guard or Tobias Harris, or you know. So there's there's guys every every night. If you're going to be a defender, you gotta, you know, you gotta go to work, and you're not gonna. It's just it's just like offense. So you're not gonna always have great nights. Look at Harden last night, 24. I think I think it's like um, you know you, you you tell them all the obvious things right. Get your hands back. Don't bite on his pump fakes. You know, try to limit his free throw attempts. And then when you foul him and he goes to the line, you don't get too upset about it because it's kind of what what happens out there. So you just do the best you can with it. Well, I kind of like what they're doing with Westbrook this year. Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen him much, but I, I, I uh, I'm not, I'm not gonna get into specifics here. But I like, I like what they're doing with him a lot. I think they've figured out a uh, unique way for him to play alongside of him, and uh, uh, I give D'Antoni and their staff credit for for blending that together. I mean, two extraordinary talents, you know, on the same team again. Um, that's worth the price of a ticket, probably. With Harden, I mean, there's no denying how effective he is, but he's hugely polarizing in terms of whether people like watching him play. Uh, do you understand the argument against him aesthetically? <laughs> well, I think that there's arguments against probably everybody, right? But him more so, I would, I would say. Just aesthetically. No, 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 yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, I mean, I think that... Um, you're probably referring to lack of ball movement and touches for other people and flow of the offense, but yeah, I mean, I, like you, you could say that if he didn't pass it, but he's a great, he's, he's one of the league's best passers. I mean, it's just, it's just a, a kind of a real 
microcosm version of get it to your primary guy and make a read and then get the ball to the next next guy. So, why, I mean, this guy's unbelievable. This guy's great. They're, they're, and they've won a lot of games. And I don't see how you can. That's the object, right? Yeah, I mean, until somebody stops, so like, why change? It's hard. It's hard. It's hard to stop. Yeah. Right? It's hard to stop. There's no doubt about it. When you look at the way your team's evolved in just trying to find a guy to close games, uh, how do you think it's going? Uh, pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. I, I think, um, you know, I think that uh, you go, when you go to the start of the season, Dave, that like, you know, you're saying, well, Pascal's got these huge shoes to fill in Kawhi, and I, I think he's exceeded, you know, we all knew, he, can he take a jump up? He's been unbelievable. He's been unbelievable, and again, it's like, it's like, uh, and his body of work and what he's done and all that kind of stuff. When you look back at the whole thing and the record that the team has, you would say that, um, you know, things are things are pretty good, and he's and he's a big part of that. Does he have his off nights? Heck yes. Just like Harden, Westbrook, Kawhi, and even LeBron once in a while has an off night, you know. But I think we just, like I always say, when he has an off night, the best thing about him is he usually. Follows that up with about 36 points, so that, so that's that's good. He bounces back and, and plays through it and adjusts. And, and we should have done a better job last night of getting him into some better situations, you know, of, of where he could shake free and 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 get a few better looks. Offensively, sorry, you go ahead. No, I was just going to ask you, like, how much we, we like to romanticize closers in this league? Yeah. Right? Who can close? Who can? But how much of that, as a coach, how much of it is scheme as much as as individual talent? Uh, well, first of all, it's individual talent, right? I think I think that's where you you know everybody will tell you that, especially in the guts of the game or in playoff games or whatever. It's really nice to give a guy the ball and have him get a basket, right? But you know you do have to you do have to be ready for you know your spacing, your cutting, your your certain actions of where you're getting them the ball and how and stuff have to be varied and timely, right? And I think I think that's. Uh, they both are closely related, but you still probably lean towards the talent of getting your own bucket. I think he took, I don't know how many free throws he took, but he had four field goals in the second half and overtime. Is that something like you look at and say, well, that shouldn't be happening with our team in general? Um, Especially in like a close game, it's not like it was out of hand at any point. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I just think that we got, we had, it felt like to me that, that I was having trouble getting them into some some uh, things later in the game, you know, that, that I probably was trying to get to and it just for some reason wasn't materializing. And again, that, that just happens. It's like, it's like, it's like we were out of sync defensively, right? Blowing schemes and not making rotations and whatever. And the same could be applied down at the other end. We just weren't quite as rhythmically good and, in tune with each other as normal last night. You talked, about, you talked about consistency in regards to norm a couple of weeks ago. What have you seen from him since? Are you happy with sort of how yeah. many how many good games yeah. stream together? Yeah, I'm, well, I'm just, I'm just, you know, I think, I think we talked about, we said something about you can't have a good one every one out of four, right? And I said, well, we needed, we're trying to change that ratio a little bit, and it seems like he's been pretty good about. Three out of four, three out of five, maybe, right? And that, and that's again, you're just trying to keep carving those, uh, the, 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 being a total non-factor. Get rid of, the, you know, try to give us a little something every night and and play, you know, your really good game, you know, three out of four games or three out of five games, and like like most guys in the like really good players in the league do. Are, are you seeing more? I mean, he talked about comfort level. Yep. Red talked about confidence when it yep. comes to Norm. You've been around him for a while now. Is it sort of like a, have you seen him more confident than he is right now? Well, I thought he played really well last night, which is why I rolled with him, right? I, and I just, I felt the game needed a, a vault-up shooter, right? Not just a spacing shooter. I thought it needed a vault-up shooter last night. So I went with him and he responded. And I give him credit for that because he went back to the bench, right? And, and you know, I just kind of told him, I said, Norm, the like great job you know great great job filling in but you know this is re in reality your role your role is an off the bench guy for this team so let's go kick some butt in this role and start getting used to it and not not you know 
well, let's just do that. You know, <laughs> let's just do that. And I was proud of him for doing that last night. And he was huge. He he led the comeback, really, I thought. What did he say when you told him that? No, yeah, they understand. He understood. I mean, I think, I think he understood. It's not, it's not like... You know, there's there's a, a closeness between he, Kyle, and Fred. There's a respect there. They've been through a lot of wars together. I think I think they I think he understands, and he's, you know, thank goodness for the sake of the chemistry of our team. He, he accepts it.